Hi, this is Andip Jali and Manos Brilakis presenting case 272 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of no flow after standing of an LAD CTO. The patient was a gentleman who had a, a complex past medical history with coronary bypass graft times 2 with unfortunately occlusion of the saphenous vein grafts and he was found to have a severe disease in the LAD with a CTO. Normal ejection fraction. This is his coronary angiogram showing the LAD CTO. There is um, a diagonal branch uh, with the proximal cap at the takeoff of the diagonal branch. The distal vessel is filling through this complex epicardial collateral. So to summarize, it's a blunt but clear cap. The length of the CTO was uh, fairly short, um, about 10 millimeters based on the CT. The distal vessel was uh, small and there was this complex epicardial from the right coronary artery. Based on that, the plan was to go undergrade. If that failed, to go uh, dissection reentry, and if that failed, attempt the retrograde, although again with a high threshold because of the small size and tortuosity. So we tried undergrade wiring. We used the Filder XTA, a Gladius Mongo. Um, we used the iliocranial to highlight the origin of the vessel. Uh, the, the wire was placed in the diagonal for protection. We had difficulty, but eventually the Mongo did seem to advance along the course of the LAD. This is the contralateral injection. And the Mongo seems to be dancing along the vessel architecture. Now, at this point, we should have done an orthogonal projection. And we see that the wire tip is looped. And the importance of this will be evident when we see the subsequent images. So to confirm where we are, we decided to do intravascular ultrasound. And uh, this is um, with uh, the low frequency. We didn't have access at the time to the high frequency IVUS. And uh, it, uh, there was this area on the um, IVUS, but it was thought that we were in true lumen. Now, we did have uh, also disease in the circumflex that we wanted to treat. So we did orbital atherectomy because of the calcium. Uh, we did place a stand there. And then we decided to stand along the LAD CTO. The problem is, after we placed the stand, there was very poor flow distally. What is it? Maybe it's a distal dissection, so we placed another stand, but again, not very good, very poor flow into the distal LAD. So what is going on? So we decided to do IVUS, and this time the HD IVUS was available. So this is the HD IVUS, and we're coming from distal to proximal. And now we're seeing this structure, which is the compressed true lumen in the distal portion of the vessel. So simply what has been done here is that we have extended literally into the extra plug space. What to do next? We decided to re-enter, so we used a stingray balloon. We did the stick and swap technique, Gaia X2 and a Pilot 200, and we were advanced the wire into what seemed to be, but of course we want to confirm, and this time we used the HD IVUS, and now it is clear that we are in the true lumen, which is essentially swimming with this, this uh, extra plaque dissection. So now we have true lumen position of the guide wire. We play stands, and then we did a standing of the left main bifurcation using DK crush, and this is the final result with a good flow into the LED. So several lessons from this case. The first one is what is evident for every CTO case, which is that before placing stents, one needs to confirm that the guide wire is in the distal true lumen. One way to confirm it is by using a travascular ultrasound. And then in this case, we thought that this was something on the wall, but it was not. The reality is, and this is apparent after we did the HD IVUS, so 20 megahertz versus 60 megahertz, we can now see much more clearly here that actually we're in the false lumen, the true lumen is compressed on the bottom of the vessel. This is an example of sometimes when things are too, too, too good to be true. And going back to the case, the Mongo was knuckled when it crossed, so that again increases the chances of extra plaque crosses. And also about looking versus seeing, again, we looked at this, but we didn't really see that this might be the true lumen. Also, the other lesson is that having access to high-definition IVUS can really facilitate the interpretation. We can see here the compressed true lumen. This was very hard to see here, despite this um, um, echo opaque uh, structure on the wall of the vessel. And then doing the IVUS, we confirmed that we were true lumen. We see now that we are into the true lumen, which is 
literally swimming within the extra plaque uh, dissection in this part of the vessel. Thank you.